is gonna work. All right. Oh, uh, right. I gotta turn on my light. There it is. Whoop. There we go. Okay. And then if you guys could speak for a moment so I can make sure that your audio was coming through. Check, check, check. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. Perfect. Okay. So, yep, everybody one, is two, three. in. All right. And I'm going to... You guys can pick whatever color you'd like. We're not going to be using the walkthrough for this teach. So just whatever whatever fan, you uh, whatever you fancy. I guess I'll leave yeah, yellow for... Someone who doesn't know how to play so they can see the board upside. Oh, up. and I'm going to do... I'm going to be the Chancellor, so I'll take purple. And then I'm going to flip that around for the stream. I have made that mistake before, making the stream watch a, an upside-down game. All right, let's see. Everybody's picked a color, so I'll hit setup, and everybody's in confirm we're actually i'm gonna switch it to supremacy because it's a little easier for a teaching game um then it should load in come on come on oh, oh there it is okay whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that is that's a heck of a chronicle yeah i play i've I've lost the last few games, so thankfully There's it gives a me lot going on. it gives me a lot of options <laughs> to explain um different cards and things. Okay, uh so uh oh and let me turn on turn order. Da -da 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 -da, turns and we're gonna go with custom. It's gonna be me, red, red, not blue. Yellow, white. We're just going to go the classic clockwise. Don't need to randomize it. So, this is the world of Oath. We have the map in the middle here. We have our own player boards around the table. We got dice. We got some other things. So, I'll go into the specific terminology first so that you know what I'm talking about. If you look in the top right, we have... A favor supply and a secret supply. These little blue books are called secrets. Sometimes they're face up, sometimes they'll be face down. Everybody starts with one of those, so feel free to grab one and put it on your player board. We also have these little coins, which are called favor. They they can be face up or face down, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, doesn't change anything about them. And you guys each start with one. I start with two favor. All right. Then uh, the next thing to mention would be you have a pawn, which this is my guy, starts on the top cradle site. You each have one of your own color, and they're going to be on the map to show where your actual character is hanging out. Um, Let's see. What else would be next? Ah, yes, war bands. You have a little bag next to your board in your color, and in that are your war bands. We each start with three. And you keep those on your board. The ones on your board versus the ones that are in your bag is important, so try not to get them mixed up. Um, let's see. What would be next? Uh, I'll explain the map next. So the map here is split up into three regions, Cradle, Provinces, and Hinterland. And each one has multiple sites, which are these big cards. Two in the cradle, three in the other two. Some of them are face down. That means no one has been there yet. Some of them are face up. Those are ones that have already been discovered in previous chronicles. Uh, there's also a discard pile in each region. And as you notice, the discard piles are face down. When you discard cards, they don't get revealed. They stay face down because you can actually draw from them instead of from the main deck. So that's one little weird thing about Oath specifically. Uh, you'll also notice up top, there's a little iconography for how much it costs to travel, how much it costs to seek, 
I'll explain those in a little bit when I get to actions, but that's effectively what that's saying. Uh, each site can also have denizen cards, which are the ones lined up with them like that. Each site in the top right shows how many denizen cards can fit their max, so the hidden place can have two cards, or it has one, so there's only room for one more. Narrow pass can only have one, so it's already filled up with this edifice. We also have relics which are face down, and you can get those by paying the cost in the bottom right, which I'll explain a little more when I get to the recover action. And each site has a special little ability that I'll go into a little more detail in a little bit. Um, Let's see. What else is here? Um, Nothing I want to talk about yet. We also have... Down here, the banks. These are each suit starts with three favor, and you will be getting that as you play cards of those suits throughout the rest of the game. Uh, we also have the round marker. It can go a max of eight rounds, so every time we all take a turn, we're going to scoot that ahead. And I can only win as the chancellor. I will start as oath keeper, and if I'm oath keeper at the end of the fifth round and on. Uh, that's my only chance to win. I can't win any earlier, but I'll explain that a little more when we get there. We also have the Visions Drawn track, which uh, keeps track of how many visions we draw. This, on top of the deck, you can see is a vision. It's got the eye there versus the Denison cards, which have the group of people on it. Every time we draw a vision, it goes across, and it will increase how much it costs to draw from the world deck. Uh, we also have the Relics deck, which if we flip over something that has a Relic, we'll drop a Relic into that area, face down. That's about everything for the map, so I'm going to zoom in a bit and talk about the player boards. I'm looking at yellow, but they're, all of the XL boards are identical aside from the artwork and the color. You have three phases on your turn. Wake. All Wake is is checking if you win basically as an exile you can win either as being the if you uh, are the oath keeper in your wake phase if you're the oath keeper you flip it over and you become usurper and then if you're still usurper in your next wake phase you win so you check for that some of your cards will say uh, wake colon and that's what happens in the wake phase as well uh the people's favor you have to do some stuff with that in the wake phase but i'll get into that a little later if it comes into play then after you do all of your wake stuff, you do your act phase. When you do anything in the action phase, generally, you're going to be using supply, which is this little marker on the bottom of the board. Every time you spend a supply, you move it to the right. So that's one supply, two supply, three supply, etc. And you can go all the way to the end. Um, any supply that you don't use by the end of your turn... So once you end your act phase, if you have any left, you bank it. So you zip back up plus that much. So effectively, uh, I'll get into that when I get to rest, but you can save. Um, you can save supply, effectively. So the different actions we have, top to bottom search, which is a little telescope, uh, costs a different amount depending on where you're going. If you're drawing from a discard pile in your region, which is wherever your pawn is currently, then you just draw three cards, costs you two supply. If you draw from the world deck, uh, you're going to do it one by one. If you hit a vision, which would mean just one card here, then you uh, will stop, increase the vision's drawn track. And how much it costs is based on where that's at. So if one to two visions have been drawn, it'll cost you three. Uh, three or more, it'll cost you four. At the beginning, it only costs you two. When you search, you draw your cards, you pick one to keep, and you discard two. When you discard them, you discard out one. So if I was to do it because I'm in the cradle, I would discard my two cards face down into the provinces discard. If it was in the provinces, it'd go to the hinterlands. And if it was the hinterlands, it wraps around to the cradle. Um, The one that you pick, you can either put to your site if there's space. So if I had it, I could put it right there and if I do that then I get one uh, favor from that bank if there's any left if it's empty you don't get it but you get a free favor from the bank of whatever card you play there however some of them you can't so if you notice here 
on Wayside Inn, there's a little tree underneath the hearth in the top left. That means that it can only be played to a site. If that was a little person symbol, which I unfortunately don't have any to show as example, but if that was a person, it could only be played to your advisors, which your advisors is pretty much your, your hand of cards. You can play face down if you want to hide something for later, or you can play it face up and be able to use it right away. You don't get any favor for playing to your advisors, but you are the only one who gets to use any of your advisors. And like I said, if it has the person icon, it has to go there, can't go to a site. Uh, if it has a chain, that means it cannot be discarded. So, like, this, the sprawling rampart, which is an edifice, has a chain, so it cannot be discarded in any normal way. Unless something specifically says remove that, uh, you cannot remove it. Um, Let's see. So, right. If you play face down to the advisors, you can flip it up later for free. It won't cost you any supply, but that's basically just a way to hang on to it. And if it's a tree that could only be played to a site, you can play it face down to your advisors, but once you flip it up, it has to go to whatever site your pawn is at at that time. Uh, so that's pretty much search. Next up is muster. Muster is how you get more warbands, because you can only really use the ones that are on your board for campaigning, which is attacking. So to muster, you just place one favor from your board onto a denison card at your site. And in most cases, you can only place one thing on here. It can be a secret or a favor, but if it already has a secret or a favor on it, you can't put anything more on it. So just keep that in mind when mustering. But you spend one favor onto that card and you get two war bands from your bag onto your board. So that's how you get those. Trading is a, a good way to get favor and secrets. Effectively, you put either a secret on a card at your site and you get favor, or you put favor on there and you get secrets. So if you want to trade, you put uh, either one secret on any of the cards at your site that doesn't have one already, and you get one favor from that card's bank. So obviously you wouldn't want to do it for an empty bank, but that's an easy way to get it. And you get one additional favor for each of that suit you have face up in your advisor. So if you traded with second chance and you had one or two beast advisors, you get one or two more favor. So one for the one you're trading to, plus one for each in your advisors. If you wanted secrets, you would put two favor on a denizen at the site your pawn is at. However, you don't get a secret for the one that you put it on. You only get one secret for each of your face-up advisors that matches. So if you tried to trade for secrets at second chance and you didn't have a beast advisor, then you wouldn't get anything. You have to have at least one beast one, but for each face-up one that matches, you get a secret. So if you had three face-up beasts and you trade with that, you get three secrets. So that costs two to do it that way. Uh, and that is one supply. I forgot to mention, muster and trade are always going to be one supply. Recover is how you get relics and how you get the banners. Uh, I'll explain the banners later. If they come into play, they don't always, and they're a little complicated. But if you want to know during gameplay, feel free to ask. Um, so to recover, you spend a supply and then you pay what you need to. So in the case of relics, it's whatever's in the bottom right. If you wanted to get the relic at the hidden place, you'd have to have your pawn there. You do the recover action, and then you burn one secret. That means you take it off your board and you put it back into the main supply. You just lose that secret, it's out of the game. Um, for this one, you would put three favor from your board into the arcane bank. So it's three favor, two arcane is what that says. Um, let's see. There's also, if you see a broken coin, that means you burn that favor. It doesn't go to a bank. It goes into the supply. And if it's just a plain book like this, that just means you put the secret on there. If it's not your turn, you just flip the secret. You don't put it onto there for reasons that I'll explain in the rest phase. Um, let's see. Then campaign where 
a lot of stuff is going to happen. So with campaign, you spend two supply, and you honestly, you know what? I'm going to explain campaign next because it's one of the most complicated ones. I'll explain travel first. So travel is to move from one site to another. If you look at the legend at the top of each region, it tells you how much it costs. So this little sort of refresh circular arrow, that's to move to another site in the same region. So it would cost one supply for me to move to the narrow pass. It would cost, if you look at the arrow, that's how far you're gonna move to the right. So if I want to move to any of the sites in the provinces, it would cost me two to do, move the one arrow. If I want to move to any of the sites in the hinterland, it would be four. That's the two arrows going all the way. And if you look, it's the reverse over here. So if I want to move two over to the cradle, it'd be four. It would cost three to move between the hinterland, etc. cetera. Um, if you move to a face down site, you're allowed to move to a face down site. It just flips and you go right over there. And if there are any relics that need to be put there, we'll pull one from the deck and put it face down next to that. The, the big thing to pay attention to is these site powers, which there's quite a few. And if you look in the top right here, there is a reference that explains what each of those icons mean. But to quickly go over these ones, the hidden place, if you look, it's a travel boot and a campaign boot costs one secret. So you got to flip one secret on your board face down. And it's like tapping in magic. It's basically saying, I used it this turn. I can't uh, use it again this same turn. But you don't lose it. It's just showing that you used it. So you have to do that to travel to the hidden place or campaign at the hidden place. Uh, narrow pass. If you move into the cradle, you have to move into the narrow pass first. You can't go to the hidden place uh, without going to the narrow pass first. So it'll cost you effectively at least three to move over there and then move over there. Charming Valley, that one's pretty simple. It costs one more supply to move out of the Charming Valley. It's so charming you don't want to leave, so you got to spend an extra supply. Shrouded Wood, it costs only two to move into the Shrouded Wood. That's it. No matter where you're moving from, it only costs two, which, unfortunately, it being in the provinces doesn't matter that much because it would have only cost two anyways. Uh, Great Slum, all that means is that if you do a, a search action and you want to play to there, you can discard one of these cards first. Normally, you cannot discard any of those cards uh, unless it's the Great Slum or you have the People's Favor, which gives you a special ability. Lush Coast, if there is another coast site that has this symbol, it only costs one to travel between them. So even if there was one here and one over here, it would only cost one supply to move between those two. All right, let's see campaign all right i saved it for last it's not it's a little complicated i'll probably have to help you guys a little bit what shred of wood is two to move out of are you sure i'm checking that hold on yeah it's it's two to move out of and whoever rules it can decide oh, where you go oh okay you also okay ignore narrow pass so yes i got that backwards thank you shrouded wood it is two to move out of the shrouded wood to anywhere and it allows you to ignore the narrow pass so you could just go from there to the hidden place, and you wouldn't. It also ignores the hidden place, so you wouldn't have to spend a secret to move there from there to the hidden place. Um, yeah, like I said, the reference is up there. If you're confused about any of those, and feel free to ask questions at any point during this game. So campaign, to campaign, you are going to basically put your pawn into a place that you want to target, and you get to choose what you target. Anything that has a blue die in the corner, like this, can be targeted. So it can be that. You can just uh, do the player's pawn, at which point they get the dice in the corner of their player board. You can do a relic. So this one would add like five blue dices. But you have to do at least one thing at your site. So if someone else's pawn is there, you have to attack their pawn or their relic. Uh, if you want to take control of a site, which... In this game to win, you have to control the most sites, rule the most sites. Um, so to do that, you would have to attack the site to take it. Once you attack one thing at your site, you can attack as many other things that are ruled by the person who is there that have the blue dice. So if you attacked me um, and I 
ruled multiple sites, you can attack all of those sites. You only have to be at one to attack all of them. <clears throat> but for every place that you pick, everything that you pick, relic, site, whatever, mix and match, uh, I will get the dice that are in the corner. So let's say you wanted to attack the hidden place to take it away from me and the Grand Scepter. That would mean that I get the one die in the corner and the five dice over here. So that would mean that I get six blue dice that I'm going to get to roll. The dice, uh, I will explain in a minute when I roll them. Then, once you have decided all of that, you will decide how many attack dice you want to do. The attack dice, you can roll up to the number of warbands you have on your board. So, uh, if you only have three, you can do up to three. But you don't have to do them all. You can do one, two, whatever. You can do up to that amount as long as you roll at least one. Um, then, once you have decided how many dice, you will get to use battle plans. Let me move these dice down here in my teaching arena. Okay, so battle plans look like this. They will have the campaign symbol, and most of them will have a crown on it, which means that it is the place that you rule. So if you rule the Lush Coast, you can use this, and you just say, I'm using it, and you'll gain one supply. Um, there are other ones that add or subtract dice, so it'll say plus, you know, re uh, plus orange dice, minus orange dice, plus blue dice, minus blue dice. And it just, if it's plus and minus, it's just whichever makes sense for you. So if you're attacking and you activate one that's plus or minus attack dice, then it's going to be adding the attack dice because that's helping you. If you're defending and it's plus or minus, then it's going to be minus because that helps you. And you add all of the battle plans that you rule that you want. And so you rule all the ones at sites that you rule. And you rule all of the ones in your advisors. Uh, if it has, you know, a coin on it or a book, then you have to put the secret or the favor on there um, to activate it. Then once we've done all that, we, we selected our dice. Uh, we use the battle plans to add and subtract dice and do other things. So once we've done all of that, we roll. And what we roll is going to determine who wins. So I'll just do a roll random. We'll say it was 6 versus 10. Okay. So what we have here, and actually I'm going to get a different roll here for an example. Come on. Come on. Give me the, give me the thing. Come on. Ugh. come on one more there it is okay so on the blue dice we have two blank sides uh two single shields one double shield and one times two so you add up all of the shields which in this case that's uh six and then you multiply it. So 6 times 2. If this was a times 2, it'd be 6 times 2, 12. Times 2 again, 24. It's exponential. It just keeps adding up. So that's why the more dice there are, the worse it could be for you as the attacker. Hence why you don't necessarily want to go for a ton of targets at once. On the opposite side, we have the attack dice, which have single sword, hollow swords, and double sword and skull. There's only one of these sides on each one. How that uh, works is for every skull, you immediately lose one warband from your board. Hence why you might not necessarily want to use all of them because all of them have the chance of killing off one of your warbands. Then you add up all the swords. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus every pair of these hollow swords. So that was eight, nine for this pair and 10 for this pair. We ignore any remainders. So this one, he doesn't do anything for us. Then for the defense roll, we add any warbands. So if you attacked sites, then any warbands at those sites get added. So if I had like two here, that would add two defense. And if you're attacking the site with the pawn or, you know, like the relic, because you have to attack at the site with the pawn to attack the relic, 
uh, then any that are on the board also get added. So that'd add three if I was defending. Then, once we have those, you have to get at least one more to win. So if you tie, that's no good. So if you are still behind as attacker, you can sacrifice warbands from your board. One, each one you sacrifice adds one. So basically you have to sacrifice enough to get it to be one more attack with the roll than them to win. If you don't, you don't have to sacrifice anything, but you lose. And whoever loses, loses half of their force. That is half of the warbands involved. If it involved your pawn, the ones on your board, and any ones at sites that were targeted. And so it's half rounding down. If there's like five, you only lose two. The rest of them go back to your board, and then whoever won, um, if the attacker won, that is, and they knocked off the guy's sights, then you get to put any of the warbands from your board onto the sights you just won. And if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to, but you don't rule it because any empty site is ruled by bandits, which if you look just under the die icon, there's a little printed warband that's the bandits. So they always get one die plus one, and if there are any free battle plans, they're going to use them at the site you targeted. So if you want to take an untaken site, you have to fight them. They're pushovers. It's not too hard. So that's campaigning. I I know it's a little confusing. I will definitely run through it when we do it to make sure that there's no problems. Um, but yeah, that's that's the general idea. Then that's all everything that costs supply. We also have minor actions, which are free. You can do these all you want on your turn for free, but you can only do them during your act phase on your turn. So the options are player discard a face down advisor. So if you have a face down advisor that you haven't flipped over yet, you can flip it over to play it immediately, which if there's like a when played, you get it. If it has something that you got to put on it, like a favor, you just put it on there. A lot of them will change uh, different stuff. So like if you look at Old Oak right here, he has an icon for trade. So anytime you trade, if it's he's uh, at the site that your pawn is at and you do what it says, then you get that benefit. Or Tense. So Tense has a boot, which is travel. So when you travel, if you pay it that one, you can do what it says. And then, yeah, there will be ones in your... Like Tense wouldn't have to be played out to a site if you had gotten that in your hand. You can put it in your advisors and be the only one who gets to use it. Um, so you can flip them face up on your turn. All you want to do that. Uh, you can't flip them back face down. Uh, if they're still face down, you can discard them to make space. And if you're doing a search action, you can discard any face down or unchained advisors. If it has a chain, unfortunately, you can't discard it unless you get something that specifically says you can. But if it's face down or it doesn't have a chain, you can to make space. Because you only get up to three advisors total. There's a couple cards in there that'll like change that. Some of them bring it down to two. Some of it pops it up to four. But generally, three advisors max. Um, you can also use action cards. So any action cards that are in your advisors, face up. Or any action cards that are at the site you're at. So like second chance, that's an action. So you just put a secret on it, and then you get to do what it says in the action. That's free. You don't have to spend any supply. You just got to put the secret on it. Um, you also get to peek at relics at your site. So if you're at a site with a relic, you can look at it, which if you don't know how, you just hover over it, push Alt, and then hold Shift, and it will show it to you. And if you've already looked at a relic and you move, you're allowed to look at it again because you've already seen it. So that's that's fine if you need to remind yourself. You know, you just can't look at one that is at a site you haven't traveled to yet. And that is also free. Uh, the other minor action is you can move warbands from your board to the site or back. So if your pawn is at a site that you rule that has warbands, then you can move any of them from your board onto the site, any of them from the site onto your board, you just have to leave one at the site. You can't take all of them. You can take all but one, but yeah. That's how you can move your force around uh, more manually. So those are all of the major actions. Then, end of your turn, you go into rest. After you do all your actions, and remember, you can do 
you know, as many as you have supply for, you can do all the minor actions you like that you have the different resources for. At the end of your turn, you're going to rest, and let's say you're here, yellow. So look at yellow's board for this example. So first thing you do is any cards that have a favor on it, because you mustered or you traded or you used an action like this one, those go to the bank of that suit. So if you had done this one, you take that favor and you put it on the hearth suit. Any secrets that got put out and not burned get brought back to your board. You get your secrets back. So they're basically a renewable resource. Uh, any that are flipped face down, flip right back face up. Um, which it doesn't happen until your rest. So if you flip it face down to use a battle plan in your advisor's on someone else's campaign say you're not going to be able to use that secret on your own turn so once you've cleaned up all of that you refresh your supply so what you do is you check how many warbands you have left which in this case yellow has 14 so you go to 9 plus 14 is more than 9 then because you didn't use all of your supply you still had one less you go to 9 and then you go one more and you max out um, if you had less than that you know if you had like 6 you'd go eight to four, and then you'd still bank one like that. So you, you can save it turn to turn, but you know you can still only max out at seven supply. So don't save too much. All right, that, that is pretty much it. Let's see. Uh, right, win conditions. The win condition in this game, and that it changes by game, is Oathkeeper of Supremacy. Whoever has the Oath Keeper and does that can win. So it's rule the most sites. In this case, I start with Warbands on every site that has a Denison card. Two on the topmost Cradle site, and then one on the rest. Oh, come on. Give me a Warband. There we go. So... The Chancellor always starts as Oath Keeper. So whatever the specific criteria is, the Chancellor will start as that at the beginning of the game. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So I rule the most sites. Uh, yes, I did that correctly. And then uh, the successor, that's citizenship. I'll explain that if I actually offer citizenship because it's a little complicated. Um, let's see. And then you guys, so your options are get the Oath Keeper and keep it for two turns to become Usurper and then win on your next wake phase. Or Visions. Visions, if you played uh, Root, are basically like Dominance cards. If you get it and you fulfill it, then you win at the beginning of your next turn. And they're all basically a simulacra of the different oaths. So there's one in there that's Oath Keeper of Supremacy, where you rule the most sites. And the reason you'd want to do it is because it only takes one turn to win. If you get Oath Keeper, you got to go two turns. If you use a vision, you win on the next turn as long as you hang on to whatever it is. Uh, you can also only win if you have at least three visions drawn. So it's you have to fulfill what it says, and there needs to be three visions drawn from the deck. Uh, you can reveal whatever vision, or you can keep it face down. And if you have a revealed vision, I believe you can replace that revealed vision with another revealed vision, correct? Fodder, do you know? Sorry, uh, say that again? So if you have a revealed vision, and can you activate another one and just discard yeah, the... Yeah, okay. you can replace your vision if you draw another one. Right. Okay, okay. So yeah, visions are pretty much only for you guys. There's another one in there called the Conspiracy that's a false vision, and it basically lets you steal um, it lets you steal a relic or a banner, but it, it'll say on there all the different stuff on it. Uh, we also have the rule book out here, in case you want to see that. And, like I said, there's a reference up here. It explains the Conspiracy, explains the cards, a uh, summary of how the campaigns work, and the sites, and all that so, with all of that said, let's see. Uh, yellow, you still need to start with your three war bands. So I'll just get grab those for you. Um, Sorry about that. 
no worries no worries it's it, it's a lot of fiddly bits that you kind of have to deal with at the beginning um yes all right so that is how it starts chancellor always starts does anyone have any questions before we start the first turn uh, I've got a quick question. Firstly, yeah. great teach. Thank, Thank you. you. That was that was really fantastic. Really clear. Awesome. Um, if you uh, attack, so say uh, I wanted to attack the Great Slum, mm -hmm. would you get a defense dice for? You get this one defense dice here, mm -hmm. a defense dice for the war band that's already on the site. Ah, no, and no. then do you? Oh, no. Actually, no, it's you get uh, a defense die for that, and then each warband is plus one to whatever you roll. So you don't get another dice for the warband, you just get an additional defense point after you roll. Okay, uh, okay, I see. Um, but just to also, clarify, when, sorry, when you're attacking, you get a, a die per warband that you have. Yes. On defense, you get a die per die like the one at the site yes. or the one on your board. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. That's that's correct. It's when you're defending, it's based on whatever's being targeted. So one per site or whatever it shows on a relic if you're attacking their relic. Um, or if you're attacking their pawn, it's the two in the corner of your board. Uh, and then, yes, uh, when you attack, it's up to however many warbands you have. But remember, each die could kill off a warband, so... You got to kind of risk assess how many you actually want to risk while still getting enough to actually get the high roll. And one last thing, whoever has Oathkeeper, they get plus one defense die whenever they're campaigned against. And on the flip side, Usurper, which you guys only get, I never get Usurper. But just as an example, if you're Usurper, you get two extra defense die when somebody campaigns against you. Cool. Okay. Thank you. That that's that that's clear. I just wanted to check how the defender and the warbands they have work. Yes. Um, so yeah, that that's cool. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, one last thing. Right. Uh, you have been dealt uh three cards as if a search action. So to start off, you pick one to put face down in your advisors, and then the other two you will discard out. So right now, pick a card you want to keep, and then pick where your pawn's going to be because that's going to determine where you discard your other two cards too. And your pawn can start on any face-up site. Uh, we do need to do it in turn order for discarding purposes. Uh, yes, yes. So I already have my pawn here. I'm going to take... Ooh, I'm going to take this guy. And then I'm going to discard out to the provinces. And then red, you pick where your pawn will be. Yep, and I got selected my card. I'm going to go down here into the Great Slums. All right. So I'll, I'll discard in the Hinterlands. All right, and then yellow. I think I will go to Polish Coast. All right. And I'll grab my cards. Discard to there. Oop. I pick up the pile again. What's that? And I pick up the pile. Uh, just hold it, like click it. Yeah, you gotta just hold and, the click. And you'll actually discard in the cradle. Uh, so yes, yes, because you're out okay. in the hinterlands. Whoop. I got the pile. Sorry, I'll stop. Yeah. Whoops. So you just want to grab the top two cards. Yeah, there was one in there, so just the top two. Uh, if you just click oh, and pull real quick. Yeah, uh, there's one. It seems to be a little like laggy. Oh, for I, me. I I can get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm lagging you're, pretty hard too. Your uh, yeah, Ruji's, or the, the the pings are a little high right now. Apologies. Okay. All right, there we go, and then white. Uh, I will also start in the Great Slum. All right. Let me turn that around. Um. Yeah. Cool. And then I'll discard these two. Whoops. Oh, uh, sometimes it doesn't snap work. correctly. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I think that worked. Yes, that worked. Yeah. All right. So, so I get to go first here. Let's see. I'm already already ahead. What do I, what do I got here? Do not discard sites with that. Uh, what do I really want to hang on to, I think, is the question. Hmm. 
Okay. I am going to... Yes, I'm going to start out by mustering at the Hall of uh, Debate. And that's going to get me two warbands. Then I'm going to move with two supply over to the... No, oh, I'll do the Charming Valley last. I don't want to... You have don't to have to go through Narrow Pass before moving Charming Valley? Nope. Uh, narrow Pass is just when you're moving into the region. Okay. All right, and then I will yeah drop two of my warbands onto the Great Slum. Hang on to it. And let's see. Uh, I'm going to activate Press Gangs. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Not yet, not yet. Uh, then I'm going to spend two to go to the Charming Valley. Up top here. And I'm going to trade with uh, the Sprawling Rampart. And because I have an order card in my advisors, I get an additional favor. And then I'm going to spend my la spend my last supply to... Oh, let's send it to send it to Arcane. And I'm going to use that to muster. I'm going to immediately drop the two of those on Charming Valley. And that is the end of my act phase. I'm going to drop that onto Arcane. Take my secret back. And uh, whoop, drop that on Hearth. Or I forget. And yes. Oops forgot to set that to my turn and oh I gotta move my supply back up so it is it is 11 to 17 no it's 10 so it's 10 to 4 Ooh, really really shortened that up well that's fine that's the end of my turn okay well they got all these murder hobos running around so <laughs> gonna flip this and we're just going to do a trade to start out with Wayside Inn, which will get me two favor, since I have one in my advisors. Yep. Um, <coughs> is there anything fancy I can do? Uh, uh, I guess we're just going to muster really quickly. Yeah, FC95 in chat asked, does mustering put warbands on your board or on sites? It puts it onto your uh, board, but then it's a minor action that costs no supply to put it on the site your pawn is at. So in that case, I rule. mustered it to my board, and I just immediately used a minor action to put it on my site. Yes, this early... Yeah, I'm going to spend the two and just search the world deck, which will just give me this vision card. Nice, and that moves the vision drawn tech up to here, so now it's going to cost three supply to check the world deck. <clears throat> oh, boy. wonder if it's a good one. <laughs> I'll never tell. Yeah. Um. Man. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, we got three left. I guess we'll do another uh, muster. Yeah, you always want to be able to defend yourself. Um, but yeah, 
but balancing the economy is really difficult. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna bank bank my we last can hear you. supply, so that'll put me back up. Guess the max. screen can. It does this sometimes in Streamlabs. There we go. Can you hear me now? It's it's not sure. that I'm muted. For some reason, sometimes my uh, input just stops working on Streamlabs. I don't know why it is, but I just have to go change the input, go back to the actual input. I don't get it. But yeah, you guys are hearing me through a different mic because for whatever reason, my streaming mic just like pops in and out. It's very like clippy for whatever reason. So I have to use two mics when streaming this game. All right. So I'm going to reveal my advisor wild cry. If you play a wild card, um, gain one supply and two war bands. Then I'm going to search. Okay. And be sure to go one at a time in case you hit a vision. One, and it uh, costs three two, to ooh. search because of the vision got dropped. Right. And three. All right. All right. So let me look here. All right. I am going to play this advisor face up. Okay. Ooh, and then, that's a very good one for this oath. And then, do they go to the Citadel now? Uh, they go uh, to the Cradle. Cradle. Yes. Cradle. Yeah, it's yeah, always so going to be. Discarding the hinterlands, it'll just wrap around to the Cradle, and then the Cradle discards the provinces. Oh, uh, okay. It discards yeah. the hinterlands. If you, um, it also it it's easier if while you're holding two like that, if you hit G, it will group them into one stack. Okay. But yeah, the the way to think of it, originally it was going to be a circular board, cradle in the middle, provinces, hinterland moving out. So it basically moves out, and then once it hits the hinterlands, it hops back to the cradle. All right, so I'm going to trade with scouts. All right. And then, oh wait, there's only one order. One yeah, ball. unfortunately. Okay. Well, welcome to Oath. <laughs> And then I will muster. So I can't muster on scouts now that there's a secret on it. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. All right. And then I will gain two war bands. That's right. And then I can campaign for free. Yes, because you have yes. knight errant. Or knights errant, and yeah, you can target. You have to target at least Lush Coast because yep. you have to target something at your site. But then you may also target any of my other sites that I rule. All right, I'm just going to target Lush Coast, which means you get two defense dice plus plus one because you're warp in there. That is correct, and I also get the option to use any of my any of my battle plans. Um, oh, uh, one thing I also didn't mention. If the battle plan is red, you can only use it while attacking. If it's blue, only while defending. If it's a gradient, you can use it in either. So in this case, I can't use scouts because I'm defending, but I do use Sprawling Rampart, um, which actually adds one more die per site that I rule because I rule Spru Sprawling Rampart. So I actually okay. get four dice. So in that case, I will not campaign. Okay. Um, Would it be four or three? It's hold on. Each site two, ruled two by two for Lush Coast and one for Earthkeep. I oh right, sorry. You're only you're only attacking one site. My bad. So actually, yes, I would only get three. Mm. I think I'll hold off and I will search the uh, hinterlands deck. Yeah, probably probably a good idea. My general rule. Um, which doesn't always work, but my general rule is you want at least twice as much attack die plus one, mm -hmm. maybe even plus two if they have uh, four or more dice. All 
Alright. I will All right. play this face down. Whoops. This card got flipped. Sure. Yeah, uh, then... It looks like, uh, Iggy, we do not have permission to peek at the moment. Oh, sorry. I got to promote you guys. One no second. No problem. That will be my turn. Yes. Yeah, I know a cool. lot of people who play Oath um, have it all set to that already, but I play uh, games other than Oath, and so I don't always want to have uh, people have the permission people to peek. Yeah. <laughs> people flipping the table on you. Uh, it yeah. looks like I still don't have permission. To... It's, it's Alt... Uh, oh, shift, shift right? Yes. I, I just promoted you, oh, so it should be. Yeah, good. no, it's it's, yeah. it's okay. I was just doing that one. Nice. Okay. Um. So I will uh, spend three supply to search the world deck. So let's go one by one. Uh, one, two. Oh, I have and there's a vision. A vision. All right. So that's okay. two now. Uh, it doesn't change how much, but if we draw one more, then you can start using visions as win conditions. Man, nice. I really like my lighting right now. It feels very like uh, fireplace, campfire. It's very thematic for this game. Okay, let me just have a look at these. Well, uh... <laughs> I did see it, but I'm not going to use that against you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot to do the uh, flip. Anyway. Uh, that was the thing. I've been playing a lot of games with the Clockwork Prince, the automated player, and one of the things is if you draw if you draw a vision, you're not supposed to look at it, but there's not really any easy way in TTS to draw <laughs> it without it showing up, so I always have to like side-eye it real careful, <laughs> blind si like the blind spot in my glasses mm. to just like flip it. <laughs> How is the uh, how is the clockwork prince? He's really hard. Is the thing I've found. Um, he he empties out the favor banks really fast, and he's very mm -hmm. aggressive. So like, if you don't get on top of him within the first couple rounds, you basically have lost. Uh, would you suggest using it in a two player game? I think so. Yeah, I think one player he was honestly a little too aggressive, but having two player where it can kind of you can split wh who he's targeting off and on might work better. Gotcha. Yeah, I did actually, I did a stream on Thursday where I played a couple of games with him. So you can check that if you want an idea. I didn't explain how he was working so much. I just kind of narrated. So it, it it's it's confusing. It's a very big flowchart. But w once you start to get it, it does make some kind of logical sense. Nice. Um, I'm going to uh, trade with the old oak. Okay. So I will get, I got uh, one advisor here so that's two to favor yep Correct. nice okay very good mm -hmm. uh i will oh uh, uh wait uh you forgot to discard all the cards from your hand oh uh oh i'm sorry about that I thought I no problem that. i do oh, that I all the I time just discarded, i just discarded one yeah as soon as you as soon as you like move away right. it tucks it down <laughs> so low that i always forget for like a turn or so uh Perfect. Okay, great. That's uh, that's going down another one, um, and then I will muster spending no supply on uh, second chance. That's right. So that's one and two. Yeah, the bags There's are being friend. really leggy. I think it's mainly because I'm streaming uh, both the game and my video, so it's kind of that'll, that'll do it. Yeah. It's not too bad. I've seen people's pings get up into like nine 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 just maxed out, and then it's like basically they just have to dictate someone else to move their stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh and then I will uh I'll search the discard piles. I'll go down one, two. Yeah, and there you don't have to do one by one. If you hit a vision, you just get all three anyways. It's only in the world deck that you stop at a vision. That's okay. Well, and it's, is it draw three? Three, still? yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, as long as there are three. If there's less, you just draw the whole discard.
Okay, I will take uh, that. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, god damn it! <laughs> Won't forget to flip. Well. Yeah, okay. there's it, <laughs> it, there's a lot that. of hidden information in this game, so the flips are kind of hard to get used to. Great, and I'll uh, discard those to the hinterlands, and thus ends my turn. You guys emptied out province's discard before I could get a crack at it. All right, well we move the round marker over one, so we're in round two. Ah, let's see. I'm still Oath Keeper, so that's good for me. Guess I should just shore up my defenses. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, so... Let's see, I'm gonna spend one... to trade with Sprawling Rampart. Uh, ooh, or do I wanna do... Ah, well, it's gonna get me the same regardless, so... We'll just do that. Then I'm gonna muster twice so i'll just move both of those over whoops come on okay come on select multi-select no you can do it there we go there we go on both inquisitor and deed writer so that gets me four one two three four and i'm just gonna drop uh, whoop. i'm just gonna drop two of those nope just two come on come on TTS is giving me... Fine, I'll go one by one, if you insist. Okay. I'll drop two on Charming Valley, and I'm going to bank one because I'm not going to have any real supply otherwise. So I will clean up. Arcane gets something. Hearth gets something. I get my secret back. And I have six warbands, so go up here. Go back up here, and then the one I banked. Um, do 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 do. Anything I missed? Nope. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, so I guess we'll start out quick old trade with the Wayside Inn. And then we're gonna travel. Over to the hinterlands. I'm gonna see what's going on here. There's just that tiniest bit of lag where you just have to be extra deliberate with your actions, and it's throwing me off. Yeah, I'm, I'm having the same issue. Yeah. Uh, so for the record, uh, the river here. If you muster here, you gain an extra warband. That is what. Ah, uh, but only if you does. rule it. But only if you rule it. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So whoever rules that gets three on a muster there. It's pretty, pretty good, especially in the Supremacy game. So I'm going to search the Hinterlands. All right, and then while you do that, I am going to uh, be right back. Four dice. Okay, I have returned. 
Sure, I'm campaigning against the bandits for the the river here. All right, see what you get. Ooh, Yikes. skull. Okay, so that kills one immediately for the skull. Yep, and to explain it for the newbies, it's two plus the one printed on there. They have three, and then two, three, and I got four on the dot. Yes, because it's two from the skull, the one whole one, and then the two hollow ones add up to four. So I don't have to sacrifice anything to win, and then I'm going to put two warbands here on the river, and that will uh, shore up my turn for now. So I've got eight warbands. Go back out here, grab my secret. Ends my turn. Nice. So it'll cost me three supply to move to the blank place. The unrevealed place. Correct. Okay. Uh. The blank. Oh, oh, the the unrevealed one. Yes. Yeah, that's three. Mm -mm. Yeah, moving around the hinterlands is not cheap. Yep. Well, again, if you think about it in the circle, it'd be like moving around a much larger circle, so it would just take longer to do. So yeah, I'm just going to move to Hinterlands then. All right. And then... Oh, and they're uh, locked, so you got to hit, hover over and hit L, and flip it. Planes! Um... So the planes, it's a plus attack dice to any campaign there. So even if you're the one who rules it and you're defending it, they still get a plus, plus one attack dice for campaigning there. So I get the plus one when I attack, and whoever gets it, whoever yeah. attacks gets plus one. Yeah, anyone targeting the planes will get an extra attack die. Yep. Um, and then there's the opposite of that. There's the mountains, which unfortunately looks like isn't in this game, and that's minus an attack die when anybody mm -hmm. uh, targets it. All right, I think I will just uh, search. No. Okay. Never mind. I will muster. I can't muster because there's no one there. Yeah, um, that's always that's always the thing. You'd have to spend the last of your supply. Hmm. I always run into that too. I'm like, oh, mustering would be a good idea. I'd have to search first. Oh, I can't really do all that. Ah, it's it's so much more complex than it looks like on a surface level. Very puzzly. Um. I guess I will move into the provinces. So do I have to pay anything extra to move to the Shattered Forest or just when moving uh, out of the Shattered Forest? No. Nope. Uh, it's not somewhere you really want to go because yeah. uh, if you want to move out of it, the Chancellor actually gets to pick where you go because it's oh. who rules it. Yeah, I was okay. about, to, about to say. All right. I guess I'll move to the slums then. Okay. Uh, the, the slums is actually pretty nice because even though it's filled with denizens, you can still play a denizen card there and discard one of your choice. Yep. All right. Which is, uh, if you get the people's favor, is the power of that as well. And um, I think I'll have my turn. Okay. Or actually, now I can muster. All right. So. Oh, I didn't even realize the people's favor lets you do that in the entire region. Yeah. Yeah. I've it's... played this game ten times, and I still <laughs> I just figured that out. Oh, yeah. This is definitely one of those games where there's all those tiny rules that you don't notice. Mm -hmm. until I always mess up uh, the darkest secret. I'm like, I'm going to get it. And then I forget you have to have, they have to be at a site that doesn't have any... Like, or has a card that doesn't match their advisors. I always yeah. mess that part up. Yeah, I, f I find thinking about all the rules in this game thematically really help kind of keep, keep them clear. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, um, you can tell Cole, like, put the time into making sure everything makes sense in this universe. Mm-hmm. Actually, my last game, half the game was me stealing the darkest secret and then getting somewhere where it can be taken back from me, like, over and over again. Yeah, that's why if this was a darkest secret game, the planes would be especially helpful since there's nothing there, so you can't have something that doesn't match one of your advisors. All right, yeah, I'm good at my turn. All right, and ooh, don't forget to uh, clean up all your favor and stuff. There we go, it's on Beast. Fantastic. Um, Before we, uh, after my turn, perhaps before we go into the next round, if you could just give us a quick run through of the of the darkest secret and the, the people's favor sure yeah uh, i think I, I i have a basic understanding of how they work having read through the rules but it might be a good a good point to to, to introduce that yeah yeah definitely um, cool okay but I'll, I'll i'll go through my turn just to keep some continuity um okay i am going to oh, i had the order in my head and now i've completely forgotten it <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna trade. Ooh, uh, I'm gonna do this. Okay, yeah, I'm going to firstly trade for the, uh, the second chance. Uh, so I'll take one and two. Um, then I am going to, uh, so I guess that one. Then I'm going to trade with the old oak. So one, two. Um, uh, so that would give me one, let me double check this. Yeah, so that would give me two uh, darker secrets. So the card power adds one plus the number of uh, beast advisors you have so that would be two that's correct yep one correct. per okay. one per matching advisor and in this case an extra one because of the old oaks power to add one when you have a beast advisor nice okay let me uh for some reason this is the only way i can take them from the uh supply that's that's fine okay that's all good which I believe with the old oak, you'd, you're always going to get at least two because it specifically says to trade with it for secrets and to get any secrets from that, you would have to have a beast advisor. So basically it makes you minimum two secrets for a trade. Yeah. Uh, very good. And now my next trick. Uh, let's go uh two to travel to the uh shrouded wood now i'm gonna peek at this relic sure see what we're working with hmm. you know i never peeked at what was at the hidden place but since i traveled there Jump what was this Oh. I don't think I've used that one in any of the games I've played. I often don't get many relics, though. They're always pretty pricey. So to the, the relic, that does that have a cost to take it? Yes. So to get the relic, you do a recover action, which is one supply, and then yep. you do whatever is in the bottom right 
of the card. So in this case, to get the relic, you uh, need yes. to burn one secret. Just remove it out of your supply. You don't get that one back. I see. I see. Okay, great. Um, so... Yeah, there's also... Some of them are homeland sites, where basically it's a specific suit. If you play a card of that suit there, you can get a free relic. Or you can get two warbands, or something else specifically what you get. Yeah. Can you discard an advisor at any time during your turn? Uh, you... If it's face down, yes. If it's face up, you can only do it when replacing it with another card through a search action. Okay. <laughs> choices, choices. Oh. Okay, then. I will... Uh... I will uh, muster on tent. Take uh, one, two, there, and oh, and don't forget to spend your supply. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I f I'm pretty sure that's why in the rules it specifically says spend your supply, then do the action. Because often, if you d try and do it after, you forget to do it. But, like, that, uh, that happens many times per game, so it's no worries. Uh, and then I will, uh, I will activate this Blood Pact card. All so right. I will discard those two again to get another secret. Just two? Uh, just the two, yeah, just for the one secret. Okay, okay. Uh, and I'll take that, and uh, that will, um, I think that will be, I'll, I'll leave it there, I'll, 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 I will end that there, so um, let me clear up, and then I'm no genius, but White seems like they're loading up on secrets and has a vision oh. over there. Yeah, <laughs> and they asked about the darkest secret, so <laughs> got kind of an idea of where they're going. <laughs> All right, so as requested, and let me put a stream marker here so I can highlight this explanation later. Uh, I just put the uh, the secret and the favor on both Thanks. of them. Thanks, yeah, I realized that I forgot to do that. All right, there's a stream marker. All right, so if you direct your attention to the top left here. We have the two banners, the banner of the Darkest Secret and the banner of the People's Favor, often just abbreviated to the Darkest Secret, People's Favor. And you can, instead of recovering a relic, you can use a recover action to get one of these banners. If you want the People's Favor, you just have to put more favor on it than there currently is. It starts out with one, so just two or more favor. It's your choice and you spend the one supply to recover, and then you get that. And what it lets you do is when searching, uh, you can discard a Denison card from any site in your region and then play the card there. So it means that you can be playing cards to any site in your region that has space and getting a favor for it, or uh, if there's no space, just get rid of one you don't like and replace it. So that's very useful. Um, when you have it, Every time it's the beginning of your wake phase, so the start of your turn, you got to put one more favor on it or take a favor off if there's more than one. There has to be a minimum of one. Uh, if by after doing that, you've put the sixth one on, it flips to the mob side, which the mob side is pretty much the same, same powers and everything, but at the beginning of your turn, you have to put a favor on it twice. So basically, you can put a favor and then take one off, but you can't do both. Um, if you recover it, 
you do have to put more so it's not just adding one to the one that's there. So you'd put two, and then the one that's on there you put in any favorite bank you like. If there's more than one that is on there when you recover it, you put in whatever favorite bank you like, and then you go to the right putting one in each. So if you put it in Discord, then you put one in Arcane, then that, and it loops back around at the end. Um, so that's the People's Favor, which is one of the victory conditions, and it's one of the visions. The Darkest Secret, similarly, you have to put... Uh, sorry, hmm? sorry, just to clarify, uh, when you discard the coins, you actually have to start with whatever favor bank has the least amount of favor. If I'm reading um, right. Well, no, 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 close, but uh, it's if you put it off of the thing at the beginning of your turn, then you put in the least. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. you are right. You get to pick so when you're doing it from times. after recovering. But then, yeah, at the beginning of your turn, if you decide to take it off, you put it in whatever has the least. Gotcha. Favor. Okay, sorry about that. No worries, no worries. Uh, the Darkest Secret, similarly, you just put more secrets on it than it already has. So, in this case, two or more. Um, in this case, instead of going to favor banks, you get one of the secrets that was already on it. So in this case, you get one secret back, and then any that are left go to whoever had it last. So if there was two on here, you'd get one. Whoever had it would get one. If there was three, they'd get two. You'd get one, and so on. Uh, what this allows is that no matter what the vision drawn tracker mark is, uh, it's two supply to check the world deck. So you don't have to worry about a bunch of visions while you have the darkest secret. Um, you don't have to add to this one, but if you'd like to, to keep it safe, because however many favor or secrets is on these is how many defense dice you'll get if someone targets it, because they can target it in a campaign, but you get one defense dice per the things on it. Um, let's see. The other thing is, in this case, because no player has it you can just get it with a recover action if a player has it you can only get it if they're at a site where there is a card with a suit that does not match any of their advisors so if i had it and i was at the hidden place there is a hearth there i don't have a hearth advisor so you could take it but if i was at uh the lush coast you couldn't take it because i have an order advisor there's none there that don't match or if i was at the plains there's nothing there, so there's nothing there that doesn't match. So that's something to keep in mind if you want a gun for that, or if you want to protect it, is to stay at a site that matches your advisors. Um, Thematically, that is my favorite rule in the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. And that is also a recover action. Um, the only other thing is if you campaign, like I said, they get all the defense dice, one per thing on it, and if they succeed... Uh, they just burn two of the things that were on it. So burn two of the favor or burn two of the secrets down to a minimum of one. There's always going to be at least one on there. So that is how that works. We're in round three now. Uh, do you guys have any questions about those? No, all good. At the moment. Okay, yeah. Feel free to ask any questions in media res if you'd like. So... What am I to do now? I've well exhausted my warbands as it is, so I should probably just hop over and shore up my defenses a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to drop one here. And then I'm going to... Let's see, what what is a good spot to hang on to? Well, Shrouded Wood, because it gives me control, so I'm going to spend two to move down to the Shrouded Wood and drop two of my guys there. All right, then I will check this relic. Ooh. Hmm. I don't really want any of you guys getting that, but I only have the one secret. Hmm. Is there anything else? You know what? I should search. I have not done a search action. So let me spend the three to search the world deck. Here we go. One. Two, three, no vision. Yep, not even the next one. Okay, what else do I have here? Oh, that could be good. Hmm. I'm going to go with 
this one. And in fact, I'm just gonna flip it bear traps, which is a defense battle plan. Then we're gonna discard out to the hinterlands. And then well fortified. It... Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, and that's the end of my turn. So we're gonna hop back up to here. Didn't bank anything. Didn't put anything out on the board. Didn't draw a vision. That's the end of my turn. Okay, well, let's start off by seeing what you discarded. Yeah, y'all are pretty smart for preventing me from getting anything from the province's discard. That is good. And you emptied out the order bank, which is my chosen suit here, so yeah. I don't have a lot of resources I can grab. Hmm. Actually, we're going to play this out to grab one for Nomad. Okay. Yeah, I considered that. It's only the single use yeah. is the thing. Oh, yeah, but... That is going to be worth. So I'm going to actually trade with the Mounted Patrol. Get two more favor, or sorry, one favor. Oh wow, you have a lot more favor than I realized. No, don't don't mind me, Chancellor. Hmm. <laughs> don't mm. mind. Perhaps taxation is in order. <laughs> Uh, which leaves me two supply. And I guess I will spend one to muster, which gives me three warbands. Hmm. And... I guess I will... I will bank that last one sit tight so that brings me back up to eight plus one so we'll go to discord my secret back all right things are shaping up all right uh first thing i want to do is reveal horse archers oh and then I'm going to campaign in Great Slums. I'm going to use five warbands okay. plus heart archers. So I get eight die. All right. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention, and it, it hasn't come up so much, but uh, you can use any of the Denison cards at sites you rule. If you don't rule any sites, it's just where your pawn is. But because mm -hmm. I rule in Charming Valley, I still get to use Sprawling Rampart. Because I rule at the Lush Coast, I still get to use Secret Police and stuff. So all of those, um, I'm still able to use. So in case that changes how many dice you're going to use. Nope. Okay. So yeah, you get your five plus the three. I am definitely going to use Bear Trap. So you lose one. All right. And you lose one Warband oh. as well. I did not mean to do that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Trouble. Oh, no. Just like in real life. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then I get I get the one plus... So I lose a dice and a warband? Yes. All right. And this is Sprawling Rampart. I get another die. Mm, do I have any other defense? Nope. So, yep. Yeah, I'm going to activate those two. I get three dice. You get, oh, come on, no, come on, select, select, there we go. And I roll two, three, plus my three there, 
that comes out to six, and you have two. So you four, killed one instantly six. before you count. All right, I already killed one. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you definitely win there. So I lose one of my war bands. He goes back in the bag, and my other two go back to my board. And now you can put as many war bands as you like from your board onto the great slum to claim it. A successful campaign. Three there. And then, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't spin my campaign. And then this guy gets discarded. That's Does correct. He, he goes to the discard pile? Uh, he goes to the one, one out from you, so hinterlands. All right. Oh, you should have uh, mustered first, and you could have done it. For I don't have any before. secret, or I have any favor to muster. Oh, oh yeah. Gotcha. All right, and then I will search. Oh, do you not have any secrets either? No. Ooh. I am broke. That is uh -oh. unfortunate. It's very difficult to do much without any secrets. Especially no secrets or favor. I did the same thing in my first game. I was just like, I want a relic, and I burned my only secret, and everybody was like, that was a bad move. And I was like, why? And then I immediately realized that, like, oh, I can't really do much anything. Ooh. All right, I'm going to play Insect Swarm. Right. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's great. That's a very good one. It's my first time I've seen that card. That's great. Yeah, yeah. D to keep in mind, I believe we are in the sixth game in this Chronicle. Gotcha. Uh, and then I also get two supply, or one supply and two warbands. Which I specifically... I've specifically, yeah, this is game six. I've specifically did the first five with Clockwork Prince, and I'm kind of filtering it through you guys to make sure that any mistakes I made with Clockwork Prince don't seriously taint this chronicle. And, uh, I will end my turn. Okay. You got seven war bands now. And that makes me... Okay. Uh, I will begin by spending one, two, three to search the world deck. All right. Uh, okay. And there she uh, is. Ah, yes. A vision. Another vision. So every search after this in the world deck going to cost four. Unless you have the darkest secret, then it's still only two. Great. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I will... I'll discard these. Nothing really interesting to see there. I will be right back. Sure. Um, and then I think, you know, I mean, <laughs> who would have seen this coming? I think I might. I don't, I don't think anyone knows what you're about to say. I might have a little, I, I've just always been interested in the darkest secrets. <laughs> and so I think I might Playing that. All right. So, yeah, take the one off and put it on your board. Yep. And then put as many of your four as you'd like on there. Great, right, let's put four. All right. And keep in mind, you don't get them back unless somebody yep. claims it from you. So. That's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, I will go one two to move down to the great slum ah actually you're moving out of the shrouded wood so i get to decide where you go oh, I rule oh okay it. so uh, um where do uh, i want you to go where would be <laughs> beneficial to me hmm i say you know, I'll 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 allow Great Slum. I think that's that's fine. That doesn't mess me up too much. Okay, then. 
Thank you very much. I considered the Charming Valley for a second, but I'm like, I'm already pretty far ahead. That's a little mean. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Uh, and then I will... Uh, what should we do? To end... Uh, and then let's spend a spend a. I uh, realize you what you're doing. <laughs> a secret and uh, to to trade. So sorry, let's be sure. going down to the going going down. And uh, not that I know what you're doing or anything, but uh, <laughs> now that there are three visions drawn, if you reveal that vision, that and it is the one that needs the darkest secret, I believe, the vision of faith, then if you keep that till your next wake phase, you'll win. Yeah. So, so you'd have to play it this turn to win on your next turn. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, you know, since you've said that, since you've, you know, for for the purposes of play. Yeah, it was my let's, suggestion entirely. Let's, it let's, let, let's, wasn't let's a plan. Pull that out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So yeah. And then I'll I'll end there. All right. So one of us has to get that away from you by your next wake phase, or else you'll win and the game will end. So round four. Hmm. <laughs> Dog pile. You could uh make a deal with Yellow and offer some citizenship to help him uh beat that beat that vision out of him. That is true. Huh. Yeah. Yellow also really needs a secret. So let me see if I can get an additional secret before I do that to sweeten the deal. Um, all right, so I'm going to move one. Hmm. How am I going to do this? I am going to trade with Nomad and get the one favor. Then I'm going to spend two to hop up to the Charming Valley and spend one to trade with Sprawling Ramparts for an additional secret. So, yellow. We're gonna we're gonna offer you citizenship here. So how it works is um, I offer you at least one relic from the Imperial Reliquary up here, and I can okay. offer you other things. So in this case, I will offer you one of these. Uh, let me let me check what they are to see which one I want to offer you. Oh, that one's pretty good. Uh. Hmm. Ooh, that's a very good one. Hmm. Okay, I will offer you this one or that one. You get to choose one, and you're allowed to peek at them because I said so. And I will give you this one secret I just got so that you can get some stuff. Now, if you do that, you become part of the Empire and you flip your board over, so you can't win by a vision anymore, but you can become successor and how you become successor is fulfilling the, the purple role here. So in this case, if you have more relics and banners than me, and I win, then actually you win. So it basically just means you got one, one victory condition. You get me to win while holding the most relics and banners in this case. And you also switch to a shared supply of warbands with the... Uh... Thank you. Chancellor. Yes, I forgot. Yes, you'll start using my warbands instead. So you'll take your four back, and then you'll take four of them from my supply. Um, and then the ones on your board, you'll also take from my bag. And instead, Offering, right. instead Sorry. of refreshing uh, based on your warbands, you'll refresh based on where I refresh to. So in okay. this case, if we do that, I will only refresh to here, and we'll both have only the three, unfortunately. So, offering um, citizenship is usually a net negative for the chancellor. Like, yeah, that's true. he really has no other options to, to try to keep the game going than to pretty much have because you're there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, 
just as a kind of a, str a strategy standpoint. Um, it gives you a different win condition, but it's also going to, you can also start draining him of his resources yeah. very quickly. And keep in mind, keep in mind, so I have one relic, the Grand Scepter. If I give you a relic, which I'm about to, if you accept, and you were able to take the banner away from White, which will need to keep him from winning, then that means you will have two versus my one, and you will already be fulfilling the successor uh, thing. Okay. Uh, and then, just while we're in the middle of this, have we gone over the uh, the game ending die rolls? Uh, not yet. I was planning on doing it this next round, but I can do that now. So effectively, if I am Oathkeeper at the end of round five or later, we roll the purple die right over. Where'd it go? I got it. There it's it on, is. I put it in the So we'd roll this, and if it is equal to or higher than whatever the number is, and I am Oathkeeper, that means that I will win. Uh, so if I'm Oathkeeper at end of round five, I need to roll a six. And around six, it has to be a five or a six. And of round seven, it has to be a three or higher. And at the end of round eight, if I am the Oathkeeper, then I just win outright. It never goes past round eight. So at the moment, we can't take the dark secret from him because he's at a site with... Um, denizens that matches advisor, correct? Uh, let's see. Yes. No, wild. we can uh, actually Denizen. because he doesn't have a hearth. There only needs to be one card at the site that doesn't mm. match his advisors. Okay. So uh, it is grabbable, uh, but we need at least five <laughs> secrets. Or we can and, campaign. And if I accept citizenship, all the warbands, my warbands become purple? Yes. Okay. Which would I also did, I good. didn't know that there was had to be every single matching one. Okay. And I can use any of the denizens that we control. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Once you're part of the location. empire, you also control all the sites on your turn. And you're still allowed to campaign against me. It's not super advisable because I get a lot mm -hmm. of uh, say in how you do it. Um, but what I'd recommend is if you take this, it's going to be difficult to get the five. So I'd say ig ignore whether or not he's at the suits. Just pull up some of your um, war bands from that site. Move to another site that has some of my war bands. I'll let you pull those up too, and then campaign against him. Uh, okay. To campaign um, against I, I'm going to accept though, he, would have to be at the, he would have to be at his pawn, wouldn't he? Yeah. So what and I'm I'll saying take, uh... is, like, you pull up these guys, move to the shrouded wood, pull up a couple of those guys, then move back, which only costs two, and I will say that you can go to the great slums and then uh campaign in fact uh i don't think you'll be able to muster because then the purple bag will be empty i i have a plan um but i'll accept citizenship all right so which relic do you want to take uh the far one all right one. take it and flip it over and the other thing is because you unveiled it i now have this greedy condition so i draw uh five cards but I cannot draw from the world deck. And you have the oracular pick now, which is just a free action to peek at the top three cards of the world deck on your uh, during your action phase. And then, right. uh, and then next, because you accept citizenship, just click that button. There you go. You're a citizen now. So yeah, we're going to... Oh, and you refresh your supply all the way to the left as a citizen. Put these four guys back in your bag. I'll None give you four of my guys. Well. All right, so these guys on your board. And then these guys, guys at your sight. All right. And so, yeah, so now on your turn... Do everything you can to campaign against White for that. It's going to be tricky. He's got the four, but... Oh, and I think that secret lines, too. Oh, yep, and right? you get that secret. I did promise that as well. Bam. All right, so that's the end of my turn. Let me grab that secret. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, boy. It's stuck. Uh-oh. It's stuck for a second. Oh, that, this is intense. Oh, we're back. Okay, uh, good. Nah, that didn't Jeff, do it. That's fine. Drunk. I remember. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, geez. Oh, it, it moved around. 
Okay. I only had three at the Shrouded Wood. The rest were had the uh, uh, Charming, Valley. Charming Valley. Yes. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I got to reposition this for the stream. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. And you're at Shrouded Wood. Uh, I was in the Charming Valley, right. actually. You're at Charming Valley. Okay. Okay. And then these go to the Order Bank. Careful. Careful. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's I very crowded it. there now. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Everything went a little a little bananas there for a minute, but that is my turn. I only go up to 0 3, unfortunately. But that's all right because I now have a new ally in the citizen. All right. Quote unquote ally. Quote unquote. Okay. Um, I should add a well. stream marker for that explanation and everything. And for that little mishap, I'm sure that'll be hilarious for a highlight. All right. What are you going to do, Red? Are you going to try and stop our plan? Um, well, you know, I think you guys got your handful over there with White. Um, and I'm just hanging out here in the hinterlands, minding my own business. That is true. That but is true. I'm just going to go with uh, the secret on Nomad to trade. Just clear out that Nomad bank. And then I think I'm going to tootle on over and... Uh, grab this people's favor uh, and then the coin on I put in okay so I put this coin in any bank uh, I'm yep. throw this in discord and then I'm going to throw three favor on here sure and then I just happen to have a vision, which I think I'll ah, review. Ah, no. As well. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we'll have yeah, to deal I've, with that I've, next round. That is a heck of a squeeze on you guys. But, you know, white is definitely more of an issue than me. That's for sure. I mean, he's first in order. So, technically, yeah. yeah. If he wins it, then you can't win it. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Then, let's see. Uh, I am going to step away again for just a moment. Be right back. I've got four left. Can't. I am back. Uh, CSINT in the chat says, I'm surprised Red didn't put all six favor on the people's favor. Well, I didn't because no one's got enough favor to take it as of right now. That's true. It's fairly safe, yeah. And, and you're going to put more on it each round if you don't win right, with the vision anyways. Up. And it, like uh, White isn't really concerned with it because he's doing his own thing. 
Yeah. So yeah. it seemed like a safe bet to have enough banked. Um, yeah. To play on. I got you. All right, yellow. What's the plan? All right. First, I'm gonna Hoover up. You're his boss. You need to tell him, Chancellor. <laughs> True. All right, actually, first I got to do this. First, I'll trade. So that's what one supply. Yep. So one supply, I'll trade the secret to this first uh, beast card and get two favor. Uh, three actually. You get one for the card you're trading to, oh, and correct. two for your advisors. Yep, and then I'll trade this to Old Oak. All right, and then you'll need to trade addition. two of them to get the secret. Yeah, two for a secret. All right, and then I get two secrets from him. That's correct. Or no, you get three, actually. You get one for each of your advisors plus an additional one for his ability. So I get four of them. That, uh, uh, three. Th you get three. three. Yeah, one, one per each advisor plus oh, okay. one more. Yeah, you but don't get one for the, the card on there. If trading with Old Oak for secrets, gain one more secrets if you have any. Yeah, so, so you I only get one get... more because of his ability. Yeah, you only get one more for his ability, but then you get one per advisor as well. So you get three total. Well, I get I have two beast advisors, then yes. the one for default trading, and then one for his no, ability. There, there no, is no, no, no. Yeah, okay. Okay. Only get a secret if you have a matching. Yeah, oh, there's only okay. the default when you're trading for favor. With secrets, you have to have an advisor to get anything. Yeah. That's why secrets are so much harder to come by. Yeah, they're what they cost twice as much, uh, twice as many resources. You have to plan for them, and they can get you a lot more resources because they're renewable. So, like, they, yeah, generally they're more valuable than the uh, favors. All right. So then I will. Use a minor action to hoover up one of these guys. Yep, yep. Uh, oh, and you traded twice, so. Uh, I only traded once. No, you traded with. You traded oh, twice, with, right? Yeah, twice. Second chance and then Old Oak, so that's twice. All right, and then moving up there, which is two supply. Yep. So let's do that. To supply for that, and then I will spend a secret to um, sacrifice all these guys on the ones on my board for um, secrets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That'll be four more uh, secrets. Well, when you take them up, you have to leave one on there. I have to leave one on there? Yeah. So then I would have hoovered an extra dupe from down here. A uh, fan of the genre asks, what do you guys think of the game? I love this game. Yeah, so now I get four more secrets, and you get all this supply back. Nice, nice. So yeah, that should be enough to do a recover action. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really... Uh, that's a lot smarter than doing a campaign, because it doesn't leave anything up to chance. Good work, Draft citizen. Be the same. Do I have to be in the same spot as him to recover? Uh, yes. So you gotta move back. Okay, so I move back. And then you do one more for the recover action, but that's it. Ooh. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I love this game. This is like my 12th, 15th. I, I lost count when I was doing all the Clockwork Prince games, but this game is fantastic and like we're just playing one game's worth like it really shines when you play multiple games and you start to see how the world changes and like when the chancellor doesn't win and everything just gets decimated into a new kingdom so i, I just take does this get burned on what's on here uh no that's only if you seize it so he gets three of them that are on their back okay and you get one And I put five on there, correct? Yeah, so you may you can just... Technically, you got to keep the one that was on there and then move five on, but you can just move four of them onto there, and it doesn't have to be the exact same ones. All right. And uh, I believe that ends my turn. Cool. So... I will say, I since I, I didn't know that rule about the uh, having 
if you don't have one matching advisor, I could have on my last turn flipped over. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Yeah, I thought I explained that. I thought, I thought, you know, just keep, just keep on going. That'll um, keep the game going. But yeah, that that would have totally that that would have that would have locked everything in. Um, yeah, I mean, you're then, already you, starting then... with four secrets, so you only need two more to take it back. Um, exactly. Oh, and then uh, to explain, so you spent your last one to do the recover, and now you refresh it back to wherever mine's at. So. Oh no, I I already compensated for my recover. Uh, okay, so yeah, you move it back to where I'm at, plus whatever you bank. Plus one. So, was it there? That's, yes, that'll be it. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I thought I explained that that's, well. That is abs that's absolutely fine. Um, but no no worries. So, uh, let's go. Uh... Fan of the genre also says, I love Root, and this looks really interesting, but I haven't wrapped my head around it yet. Same. Like I said, I've played a ton of games, and I still I've never won once. It's very, very difficult, and there's so much going on. All right, what's the plan? What's the plan to get get your banner back? Well, we'll have to do it this way. We'll have to go uh, trade here. One, two. Yep. So go down one. So that means I get one for the sites, and then one because I have a uh, uh, beast. It would what, actually be uh, one for the beast, and then one for the oak. So when you're trading for secrets, you right. only have one for each advisor. Okay, okay. yeah. So that's that's, a, that's an easy one so, to forget about. Yeah. yeah, but you still get two, which is yeah, how so much yeah. you so need. It'll be, it'll be two. Let me get my second one. Where's that? Okay, there we go. So weird way to do it. Okay, so that's six. Yep. Um, and th there's a hearth card there, so it is open for recovering. Uh, yep. So uh, let's go one to recover. So I take one. You take one. Uh, yellow gets to... the rest that are on there. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> Still trying to hold on to it, yellow. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then, yeah, drop your, your six. Yep, nice. Okay. That's and a lot then... of secrets. That is a lot of secrets. It's going to be tricky getting yeah. that back. Yeah, now, now you're super locked into it. Mm -hmm. uh, now. Although that secret stack is giving me anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to clean that up for my own. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Go for it. <laughs> I just can't take it. Ah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, that's, that, that's great. Oh, did one like fall uh, under? It's like. I think one's tottering. under. Yeah. 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 Well, here, let me. I, get, I got an idea here. We just drop them off of it so that we don't select the thing. What? Go a little faster. There weren't six of them. Then we select them all. Pick them up. Uh, mm -hmm. Select them all. Come on. Hit that two pick for them me. Up, and yeah. Ah, uh, that's so satisfying. Nice, nice, solid block of secrets. Yeah, if you do it on top, half of the time you're gonna select the banner as well, and it gets yeah, confusing. That's... So. That's why I was just placing them one by one. All right, so you're and back then, to winning. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't think there's much I can do to grab, to be greedy and grab the keeper's favor. Um, nope. I'm gonna have so to I see might go what I can do. One, two, and uh, move to the hinterland down here to the plains, and I'll spend a final one, two to search the world deck. Yes. Oh, and you forgot to grab your last favor from that trade. 
Yellow. Thank you. I have seen official. Just gonna zoom in on the oracular pig for a minute. Let people enjoy enjoy what is one of the fan favorite relics. Interesting. God, I just I love the art in this so much. Kyle is amazing. Look at this. Look at this angry little fox man on Animal Playmates. So good. Hum, 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 hum. Yeah, the ivory eye is also very nice. I don't believe I've been to this site, so I can check. No, that's not it. That's not it. Do I have it in here? No. Nope. Uh, I will... Nope. I will... This, just in case. Just in case anything happens. Ooh, a second vision. Uh, and then I will discard to the And that is me... Done for the turn. Okay. The fifth bank and I'll pass it to you. All right, round five. This is where things so, get Chancer, really. I will, I will sell you, one favor, for a relic, so you could use Wayside Inn to gain two more supply. Oh, hmm. Well, um, more than you... anything, right now, I need to take I need to take the people's favor, or this is going to end mm -hmm. on the next turn. So if I get a favor, I want to hang on to it, is the thing. So what... Ah, gosh, how many are in the order bank? Two. Ah! That's not quite enough. Um, is there anything out here where I can get an additional... I need at least... Well, that, that kind of gives you wiggle room to go campaign against him. I suppose, I guess. I mean, okay. But then again, he does have that I need a, mounted it, patrol. If I can get at least four favor while retaining one supply, I can get two from order by trading. That's one. Uh, I could do... Uh, the... Yeah, I could use Deed Writer to make some kind of deal. Uh, I guess white and yellow, is there any way I can convince you guys to give me your favors? If I get both of your favors, I can get it away from him, and it won't end the game at least. Well, can I even take it? Because I rule what you rule, and you rule what I rule. Um, what do you mean? So, oh yeah, you don't have enough supply. Um, the if so, the negotiate binding enrolled site. So this, I all your sites are my sites, so it's not. No, no, it's not. You don't have to do all three. It's you can do any of those. So you can oh, do okay. favor, you can do secrets, or you can do sites. So while I can't give you any sites from that, because yeah, we both rule the same sites, I could give you something else. Uh, I can't give you any relics, unfortunately, because that it specifically does not mention that. There's another card for the uh, relics. Uh, Tinkerer's Fair, I think is. Yep, yep, yep. Um, hmm. I was going to say you could make a deal for secrets, but I don't think you have enough supply to. I only have the one. So I'll give you the favor for secrets. That's the only thing we can do. I guess. I mean, technically, we can also. <sighs> no. You can trade anything. Basically, to keep him, to keep me from winning, it looks like you would need to give him secrets so he could trade for enough favor. Um, but he doesn't have the supply to make enough trades. Could and... I trade war bands? 
in this case, since he's a citizen. You can can sacrifice warbands to get favors. I can. Or get secrets. Uh, Well, yeah, I'd only get secrets out of it. Well, the thing is, it's only going to work if I can also get the favor from White. So, White, is there anything I could give you that would seal that deal? Uh, I could certainly take a secret. Yeah, a secret, or I could give you a sight, and then you would have control over whatever denizens are there. Mm. I think I'll take I'll, I'll take a secret. A secret, okay. Hmm. Ah, uh, you only got the one favor for a whole secret. Ooh, that's rough. <sighs> I kind of got it though. If we're if we're gonna keep from ending this, uh, well, first, okay. So, I w- I will say that so you can have the secret. Then yellow. Mm-hmm. Negotiating a binding exchange. I don't have anything else to really trade with yellow that fits into that. Let me let me check the citizenship rules real quick. Uh I believe those are on eight. Excess citizenship. Uh hold each other defend by adding war bands. I mean, it doesn't technically say you can't give me the favor. <laughs> um, hmm. For uh, hmm. for citizenship? Uh, no, so just as, as a, a trade. Just as a trade. Well, I mean, because you have a, because you're on Deed Writer, you can pretty much make any deal you want for anything other than relics. So you can exile me, and then. I can trade you for... No, no, you don't need to. You can still be a citizen and do the deed writer. But you don't have any... You don't have your part of the transactions. What I'm saying is, you exile me. Well, I could also... I can also give you favors. So basically, I can agree to do something later, and it's binding, so I have to do it. Mm. So... I don't know what's something you'd want later. I guess the next secret that I can get... I could promise you. Oh, okay. Uh, CSYNT says you can also just gift. So while, yes, that would put you at a disadvantage to give me your one favor, you still have a ton of secrets that you can use for trading. And if you don't, unfortunately, red will win and it won't matter. So yeah. so how about this? How about um, what if, if you exile me, what happens to me? If I exile you... I, well, I can't exile you because I, I would need to pay a good deal of favor that I don't have. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Um, yeah, you, so how do you, you can't give me any relics either? I can't, well, I can't, I'm pretty sure I can't You do any from the Imperial Reliquary anyways. Those are only for offering mm-hmm. citizenship. And also, yeah, Deed yeah. Rider specifically does not include relics. Okay, so then I will take... What? I'll give you a favor today for a secret tomorrow. Yes. Okay, as soon as I have a secret available, it is yours. So that that is binding, and I'll give a secret to White to okay, get one of those. Then we're going to spend one to... Wait. Nope. Crap. I can't do that because I need the secret to trade with Sprawling Rampart, White. So is there is there anything else I could give you? Hmm... I mean, do we really want White to win? He's been a thorn in your side far longer, Chancellor. Well, I have a plan for White, because Yellow can deal with White. He has plenty of secrets. The the faith of the darkest secret is very benevolent, uh, and is willing to help in some way, but in what way exactly? Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. But now I can't just take it because he um, has a 
Or oh, he, uh, yeah. Nah. But Shoot. I can just play. Can I play a denizen there? Can I just do uh, that? Yes, you could play a denizen there that doesn't match his advisors. Or if you go and campaign against his pawn, that will uh, that will remove his pawn from that space to any other location of your choice. So you can remove him to a spot that it's no longer safe. I mean, I think okay. I think I'll just on my turn play a denizen there. I guess. Okay. In the meantime, I need to be able to get three more favor, so I can do it by trading. For sure, uh, with two, I can get two, but that's all I can get from the order bank, unfortunately. And it sounds like White only wants a secret, which I can't do if I I'm gonna trade. <sighs> hmm, how do I do this? There's nothing for me to grab, or there's nothing for me to to check in the discard. Oh boy, I don't know if I can. Uh, no, that's not gonna work. What else do I have out here? Uh, so, I would take a sight. I would take the shrouded, the shrouded wood. You take the shrouded wood. Okay, mm -hmm. deal. I'll give you the shrouded wood. Uh, what is it specifically? Move okay, yeah. So I just remove my warband to my site, and you put whatever warbands you want on the shrouded wood. And then I get your favor. And then, yes, I am going to spend one to trade with Sprawling Rampart. The other two, right? Uh, we were supposed to be exiles in crime together, my friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. And then, I feel, yes, I feel I feel betrayed. I am recovering it. Oh, betrayal is but one of the many wonders of Oath. I guess I should have put that extra coin on there, huh? Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not exactly strong. If you take it, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that trick again. So, uh, whoop, not flip. Uh, One, yeah. And then these are going to go out to, I'm going to say... I'm going to say Discord Arcane Order. All right. And then, how many are in my bag? Eight. I'm just going to bank those. All right. With just the one, I take my secret back. Um, in which case, because I got it back, I can put that on you. Because that was the agreement. And... Yes, that is my turn. <sighs> okay. Just barely kept it going. Left. Okay. Right. So, I have... We'll move down to the plains. Oh, I will no, we trade won't. here. Oh, sorry, yellow, Hold it's on, not it's... your turn yet. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Get it. Oh, man. It's all right. Hearth is empty. Beast is not, however. Okay. Two to move over to here. One to trade. Actually, that doesn't make any sense. Take those two back. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, we'll spend two to search. All right. Okay. Okay, so that will let me discard these two to the cradle. Then we're going to play Rangers immediately. Oh, and I don't have P. 
people's favor anymore. Son of a bitch. Yep. No! <laughs> it was all going so well. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's me. Okay, so we two to move down here. Going to flip rangers. We're going to use our last to trade with the old oak, which gets us two. I spend one, two supply, but it puts me four. So close. So close. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to survive that die roll and keep banking it up. Yeah, this is this is what I love okay. in a uh, mid to late game oath when everybody is just spending their whole turn stopping someone else from winning. <laughs> so All right, my secret back, and that is it. Dang! All right. Trade this. I get the two favor from here. That's correct. And to be clear, um. If if you take that he doesn't win and we the Empire wins on the die roll, if you're tied <sighs> for relics and banners, uh it won't be a succession win. Then I get uh, three secrets for trading there. I yep. could have played that beast card at the slums because I could replace a card that would have given me the extra favor. And remember it's two favor to trade for secrets. Okay. Uh, I blew it. Yeah. All right, that's our two favors. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Shoot. Um, you only have two supply left, so you can get over there, but then you won't have the one supply needed to recover. Oh, I hold on. So he has six. Right. Three, four, six, seven, eight. That's right. I will trade. Here. Trading or... costs you another supply, though. Oh, no. Yeah, but the... Oh, hold on. That's I the thing. I my site. Plus, you're not going to be able to use it to get the supply because it already, will already have a secret on it. Hmm. That's always the easiest thing to forget is what banks are empty. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's see here. Because you're going in the right track. You will need the more secrets, but... All right, let's just rewind a bit. You do also need to get over there, and you got to get him out of the... Oh, no. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Because even if you get over there, you got to kick him out to be able to take yep. it. So, this guy goes here. Okay. All right. Yep. Reset it. This is a tricky puzzle. I believe <laughs> in you. I believe in you, citizen. You have the strength of mind. Hmm. I will. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. So let's let's see how it goes. At any time, I can replace one of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you do, okay. if you do a search action. 
Only if yeah. I do a search action. Or or if you had a face down Denison in your yes. advisor. If you flip but it, I thought face since it's down, the great slums, up. I could just move it. No, but the the only way once it's face up, it's considered played in your advisors. If it's face down, it's kind of like an on deck card that, yeah. that you can play. Hmm. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Hmm. I thought I had it locked in early on. Nobody was getting that oath keeper, but I always forget visions. Always. So if I move, that's two. And then... Sorry, I'm taking so long. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, and something earlier. Uh, because Hall of Debate is in the game, that means that um, no one can target the people's favor in a campaign. So the only way to get it is with a recover action. I do this, so. No, that's not going to work either. Um, I don't know. I don't see a way to do it, but if you can work it out, we might be able to win this at the end of the, uh, at the end of the round. And I can target this directly, correct? In what way? If I campaign, if I campaign against it. If you it. campaign, yes. Um, but unfortunately, you can only. Uh, you don't have any war bands on your board, so. How many war bands do you have in there? Eight. I don't have any war bands yet. That's true, but you got to use favor to muster. Yeah. So we'll do this. Right, and that's that's one supply. Then, then I'm going to move it's one supply. No, that's two supply. It's two, two supply. All right, right. And, and campaigning is another two. I will spend to get two more supply. Oh. Oh, and then, I forgot about that one. Okay, you might be able to pull this off. It's going to be tricky. <laughs> I will. Hmm. Search. Or no, yeah, I'll search. The Dis Denizen's deck over here. Sure. Please be a beast. Damn, okay. Now. All right. All right. And then I will muster. On. Here. I'll get oh, two. Oh, wait. Yeah, you have Knight Errant. Oh, so you can do yep. it for free. Yep. One. Two, and then I'll swing for the fences. All right, so that's your last supply. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a heck of a swing, my friend. All right. So you get two. Um, hold on, uh, hold on. What else do we rule? What else do we rule here? Uh, you can gain a supply with scouts, so I'd say just do that. Yep. Uh, that's only really. Yeah, that's only if they target the sites. Oh, what else do we have? You can't, you can't use any battle plans unless he spends favor. So. You got that going for you. Yeah. What's that? Wait, wait why did I pick wait, it up? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, ah. wait, wait it, it, it's... No, that's only enemy battle plans. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm saying the, the defense can't use any battle plans if he has any. 
Oh yeah, white white uh, would have to spend favor. I do I do not have any battle plans. Okay. Okay, so you get six dice. <laughs> oh, Let's God. hope they're all blanks. <laughs> this okay. is very risky, but there's kind of no other wants, option we have. Even, they're all first. even if they're all blanks, though, I don't think he can win, though, because he's still got four warbands on his board. Yeah, but unless he gets both, I must start again. <sighs> so can I spend warbands to? Okay. Uh, no, you. So you just uh, if you're on defense, you just add your warbands on your board to whatever you roll. Yeah, if the pawn is part of the target so in this case it would have to be yeah so it's these six dice plus these wall bands as well yeah but no it's the it's those six dice whatever you roll you just add your number of war bands uh okay i see so on offense it's you roll the number of dice as number of war um so it's hold kinda, on it's kind of hold on a sec can i oh boy can i um <laughs> uh no you would have to be have been at my site to do that never mind mm -hmm. if we if both of our pawns are at the same site we can trade warbands back and forth no nah. nope never mind yep all you're, right you're on your own unfortunately um okay yeah this is not super in your favor but uh let's 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 find out Oh boy, one no. 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 <laughs> uh, well, that's it. Well, that's um, an exciting way to end it with a campaign at least. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good game that had pretty much everything in it. Yeah, that that went yeah. very well for for first game. What did you guys all think? Let's do some after game notes here. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really uh, interesting game. I think as as you've as 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 I think you've all said multiple times, the thematic how how the theme comes out in all the mechanics that it's such a tight link between mechanics and theme, and that I was I was sitting here going, I do not care if I win or lose. Mm. I, just the story that's unfolding is really interesting. So I think the narrative is is. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, really enjoyable. And also, as I want, just want to say again, fantastic teach at the start. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I've been I've been doing a few teaching streams to practice for when I get the physical version. Um, I'm doing another one tomorrow as well, uh, off stream. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm glad that it it was pretty clear. And I apologize for not making it clear about how the suits worked with Darkest Secret, but that's also that's one like I said that anytime I'm playing and trying to get the Darkest Secret, I always forget that specific yeah, yeah, yeah. rule yeah i think it i think it's um it looks a lot more complicated than it is like yeah. learning it wise because it does look pretty intimidating but um once you learn once you learn the basics i mean or once you actually learn what everything does and like how to mechanically do everything um the real depth is definitely um planning out and like using your resources wisely yeah there's a lot of moving parts but once you see how they connect to each other and you start to see the machinery and the cogs interconnecting it all it all intuits pretty well yeah, what's what's nice about it too is uh, if you start from a fresh chronicle it always starts the same uh so you pretty much get to see the same cards over and over again and the, the deck will slowly morph itself uh so your understanding of the cards kind of grows with the game so this was a really overwhelming board to start out with mm. uh, but if you're starting from a fresh chronicle it uh it's it's not as overwhelming so, for what that's worth and i had a terrible time because i lost and i'm super <laughs> but, yeah no that was, a, that was a really fun game uh yeah that that was great there was negotiation there was yeah. a citizen there was some real risky stuff that was fantastic so let me save because it has a habit sometimes after doing the chronicle of crashing in weird ways so i'm gonna save and then we're gonna declare a winner uh oh and the other thing for some reason in this tts mod any denison cards at the same site as a uh as an edifice will disappear i'm not sure why it does that um what's that ah secret somehow got stuck into one of the hands of people who is not even playing. And then if there are any cards floating out by themselves, 
No, we're good. Okay, so declare winner. White wins. Confirmed. Uh, you didn't have any relics. I didn't, know. You did use a vision. The vision of faith. Confirmed. And now you get the choice. Do you want to grant red citizenship so they'll start the next game as a citizen? Uh, as 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 white gets the choice. That's right. Yeah, because now yeah. next turn, next game thematically, you are the chancellor yeah. who is. And what, what's interesting is since you you won with the vision of faith, that will now be the oath keeper for the uh, the chancellor in the next game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I I will offer citizenship. All right. Do you want you know to what? accept? I do not. No. <laughs> I, I feel. I, didn't think, I feel. I, didn't think I feel slighted by white. I, I had the uh, <laughs> victory in my grasp. Uh, I'm gonna li- live on the outskirts of society for another generation. Run away! Run away! <laughs> yeah. All right. So no citizenship confirmed. All right, and now you can add either hearth cards or beast cards to the deck. It's um, it's based on your advisors. Yeah. Uh, yes, for what cards yeah. are added. So so I'll, I'll add. Um... I'll add beast cards. All right. Beast did a lot of work that game. Beast beast is definitely a popular one. If it's an option, usually people pick it. All right, confirm. Did Um, not crash. Perfect. Awesome. uh, Can we we just show show what the map would look like? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, if we hit setup right now, uh, just put it out as the same. Guys. Or wait, actually, before I do that, let me export the chronicle so I don't lose it. I just gotta one sec, one sec. Just gotta put it into my uh my backup document. And then I will post that into the LFG chat in uh in the Woodland Warriors server after we finish up here. Okay, so now that I have that, yep, we're gonna hit setup, confirm, still devotion, because that's the faith based one. And this, once it loads in. Come on, come on. There it is. So that's what the map will be for the next game. All of the edifices, because the last empire is gone, are ruins now. Mm-hmm. All stuck out in the outskirts. And the map is a lot smaller because it's a new empire, but it will it will expand as as uh, the chronicle grows. Question. So uh, White ended the game at the Shrouded Wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he didn't rule it, but it's to, because no, his pawn was there. It. Oh, he did I rule it. it. Yeah. I ended oh, okay. It. Oh, yeah. I gave it. I gave it to him. Gotcha. For right. that, that uh, favor. So one thing I'm still trying to figure out. I think it'll make more sense when I have to do it with a hard copy. But so anything that the uh, the winner rules gets slid up to the cradle. Uh, correct. And then any yeah. anything they don't rule, but that has a uh, edifice on it slides down to the hinterlands and becomes root turns I, into ruins i believe so um i honestly because i've only done it automated i'm not positive but if you go onto leader game site go to the oath page they actually have yeah. a downloadable pdf of the reference for how to do it so that oh, runs through I, with pictures. i know and i've read it like six times and it still confuses me <laughs> i know that's the thing i read the rule book to this like three times before playing it and most of it didn't make sense until i actually saw it in play it's very it's very abstract until you get it on the table yeah yeah once once i think i do it with a physical copy it'll make Make I would say, yeah, sense. just when you do it with a physical copy, just take your time, make sure you're doing it correctly, don't try and rush through it or anything, and you you should be all right. Even if there's a mistake, yeah. like, that's just part of the organic nature of the game. But uh, but I think that's correct, because all of the, because Narrow Pass was all the way over here. Right, and so was the Hidden game. Place and so, Charming Valley. And Charming Valley. So yeah, all those slid down, and then... That slid up, and <clears throat> basically all these were added, and the top one is always flipped over. That's so, correct. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly. So yeah. next game when this starts, nobody can play a beast card face up because bandits own the ruined temple. That correct. is correct. That's why yeah, get, getting that thing early is a uh, huge, especially since we just added beast cards to the deck. Yep, yep. Everyone's going to be fighting for the narrow pass. That's a lot of ruins, man. Yeah. All right, so yeah, uh, good game. If, if a game ends yeah, with ruins, 
uh, and they're not ruled, they get removed from the game. That's true, Correct. yeah. If they're ruled, okay, you can yeah. repair them, I believe. Right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, as it stands. Yeah, CSYNT says the next game looks like a lot of fun. It will be. And I am going to post it into the Woodland Warriors LFG, so if anybody who's a part of that server wants to use it, you can go off of this game for your next game. That should be pretty fun. Oh, yeah, and all the ruins are behind Narrow Pass, too. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, I didn't even notice. Man, yeah. This, yeah, this game is so good. So good. I love it a lot. Yeah, it, really, it really is. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, good game, guys. Thanks for, thanks for participating. Thanks for, you know, get, helping me to have content for my stream, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, I really appreciate it. And, yeah, thanks for being great players. That game was awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was great. Thank you, everyone. All yeah, right. Thanks. All right. GG's. GG. GG. Good game. All right. And I'm ending the call there. And yeah, to you guys on the stream, I hope you I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope uh it w- it was clear enough on the teaching. I'm gonna highlight the teaching, so if you missed it or you came in part way through, you can go back and watch just that chunk and uh yeah, I'll try and get all the bits where I explained other things as well. At some point, I'm probably going to do like a how to play of this. I've done a few in the past. Uh, this is a bit daunting because it's a pretty big game, but I, 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 I think I could probably manage. But um, with all of that said, I want to thank you very much for watching, whether it's in the past, the present, or the future. If you missed the beginning of this stream or want to see any of my past streams, you can check the past broadcast tab for the last 60 days worth of stream. I've done a few games of Oath. Um, on here so if you liked this you should probably like those uh, if you want to catch any that are even older than that check down below on this the browser version for a link to Iggy Kid Twitch Archive it's a YouTube channel where I've put all of my Twitch streams so you can check everything from the very beginning to now so I, I've improved a lot so in those early ones uh, keep in mind that they, they're, they're pretty rough um, you could also check out Iggy and the Ape, my personal YouTube. I do board game unboxings, which will include Oath once I get my physical copy. I do various reviews. I've done some board game reviews, which I plan to do more of those as well. And uh, yeah, I'm participating in a game jam right now. I participated one last week. And I'm going to put up some video design diaries of those. So if that interests you, go check that out. Subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to catch any future streams, there's a schedule down below on the browser version that shows what game on what day. Uh, if you want to get know the exact time, click the line icon right over there and go to the schedule tab and it will uh, it will show you what hour and what game on what day. But that's all subject to change. So if you want to be sure you don't miss anything, follow me on Twitter at IggyDKid and turn on notifications. I tweet a half hour before each game, each stream. Um, but one time that didn't work. So if you really want to be sure you don't miss anything, follow me. Hit the heart icon. It helps out the stream a great deal. And you can turn on notifications with the Twitch app or email or however you like it to get notified as soon as I go live. So that's the best way to check it out. Helps out the stream a great deal. Doesn't cost you anything. So I'd really appreciate you considering. Once again, I'd like to thank you for inviting me into your home, your computer, your tablet, your phone, your game console, Roku, Apple TV, however it is you watch today. I appreciate you joining in. I hope I brought some entertainment and levity to your day. I hope you'll join me the next time I play Oath, uh, probably next Saturday. And I do Mario Kart usually on Thursdays and stuff. But like I said, check the schedule, all that. And if nobody else has said this to you, I'll say this to you. You're a good kid. Thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. Good night. Join me next time. Goodbye. Uh, I am going to raid you guys over. Uh, so don't don't run away just yet. So let me see. Let me see. I'm going to turn off my camera, but I'll keep mic on. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Who who am I going to raid you guys over to? Who is live right now? It is... Oh, and we just passed uh, 600 subscribers. Or not subscribe. 600 views. So thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Blue Jay, I guess. Let's do the... I guess he's doing Call of Duty. I don't know if you guys are interested in that, but he's live. And, you know, just spreading the love and all that. So let me get that started. Come on. Come on, let me do it. Raid Dr. Blue J. Wait. Got to make sure I type it right. Dr. Blue J. There we go. And that's going to raid you over in just a couple seconds here. Come on, come on. And there we go. Go tell him I sent you. 
enjoy his stream. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.